This screencast covers the material from Module 4, Lesson 24, and is based upon your homework. Uh, there's some fairly simple homework problems, and there's some that are very, very complex. The first two problems are, are pretty simple. But we'll set up a tape diagram for you. Let's read them. Jesse takes his dog and cat for their annual vet visit. Jesse's dog weighs 23 pounds. The vet tells him his cat weighs 5 eighths as much as the dog's weight. How much does a cat weigh? Pretty simple tape diagram. We know that the hole is equal to the dog's weight of 23 pounds. We're going to partition that into eight equal parts. And we're going to bracket five of those eight to find the weight of Jesse's cat. Now we could use uh, 8 units equals 23, and then find 1 unit, then 5 units, or we can simply find 5 eighths of 23. Let's look at the second one. It says, an image of a snowflake is 2 and 8 tenths centimeters wide. If the actual snowflake is 1 eighth the size of the image, what is the width of the actual snowflake? Express your answer as a decimal. Now there's a couple ways we could go about this. But we have one answer, or one part of the problem is in decimal, and the other is in fraction form. Uh, we could either change this to a uh, fraction, and leave this as a fraction, solve the problem, then convert to a decimal, or we could convert this to a decimal. Now, one-eighth is going to go to the thousandths place, so um, you might not want to do it that way. Either way will work, however, and again, eventually you have to turn the uh, lesson into a, or a, the answer into a decimal. Let's set up a tape diagram. We have the hole is 1 and 8 tenth. Partition it into 8 equal parts, and we need to find one of those 8. So again, you need to convert either to fractions, do the calculation, then convert to decimal, or change one-eighth to a decimal number. Uh, either way, it'll work. Okay, let's read this one. This is one of the problem's more difficult problems. A community bike ride offers a short five and seven-tenths mile ride for families and ch children and families. The short ride is followed by a long ride five and two-thirds times as long as the short ride for adults. If a woman bikes the short ride with her children, then the long ride with her friends, how many miles does she ride altogether? So we need the uh, distance for this, which is a given, and then we need to find the distance for the long ride and find the sum of those two. Let's set up a tape diagram. Okay, so we have the children and family ride, and that is 5 and 7 tenths. We have a longer ride for adults, and we're going to just we're going to give an expression there. We have five and seven tenths times five and two thirds. And then we have to find the sum of the two. Well, in this case, you're best setting this up as a fraction because 5 and 2 thirds comes out to 5.666666 indefinitely. So we need to convert the decimal into a mixed number and then we will convert both the mixed numbers into improper fractions and of course we're going to look for common multiples to keep these numbers uh, manageable. So there you are. It's not super difficult, but it's a bit more complex. Now this one is not particularly difficult because of the steps, but it is difficult because of the computation. Sal bought a house for $78,524.60. Twelve years later, he sold the house for two and three-fourths as much. What was the sale price of the house? Well, what are we going to do here? Uh, we can change this one to a decimal, but boy, is that a complicated problem. 
we're going to have a $78,524.60 multiplied by 2 and 75 hundredths. That's a pretty difficult computation. Now let's consider uh, an alternative approach. What if we did this? What if I uh, changed 2 and 3 fourths to an improper fraction? So I would get 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3 is 11. I'd have 11 fourths. 11 fourths times 78,524 dollars and 60 cents. Now what does that mean? It means we're going to multiply this number by 11 and that's that's pretty easy to do. It's certainly easier to do than multiplying it by 2 and 75 hundredths. Once we find the answer we'll divide that by 4. I think you'll find this approach much easier than going with strictly decimals. So again it's going to be easier to change this to an improper fraction than do some multiplication and division. The next problem is fair. It's uh, a couple steps in it, but uh, definitely not too difficult. In the fifth grade at Lenape Elementary School, there are four-fifths as many students who do not wear glasses as those who do wear glasses. If there are 60 students who wear glasses, how many students are in the fifth grade? Well, tape diagram time. We're going to represent the number of kids that have glasses, and we know that's 60. One, two, three four lines making it five parts so we'll have G for glasses and we have another group that does not wear glasses and that's going to be four-fifths of the total with glasses so let's call these uh, without glasses we need to find the sum of that and we'll find the number of fifth grade students Okay, the last problem is another one of those difficult ones. Last year they had uh, different numbers here. This year they changed them and made them a little bit more difficult. I'll discuss that in a moment. At a factory, a mechanic makes $17.25 an hour. The president of the company earns two, six and two-thirds times as much for each hour he works. By the way, last year, or if you had the older version, it's going to be six and three-fourths. And that would have made things a lot easier. A janitor at the same company earns three-fifths as much as the mechanic. And last year's problem had three-fourths, so we ended up with a common denominator for these two numbers here. How much does the company pay all three people's, all three people employees, all three people employees' wages for one hour for? Okay. Um, now, we could go and we could calculate well we know that this guy makes 17.25 an hour and we could calculate how much the president makes by multiplying that times 17 and two-thirds of course two-thirds makes it difficult because uh, that does not convert to a decimal nicely and then we could find how much the janitor makes and we could find the sum of those but we could also do some of our work on the front end so I'm gonna just propose another idea here we're going to make a tape diagram, and that's going to be the sum of the uh, employees' wages. And we're going to multiply that. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So we have a, me uh, a mechanic. He makes one. The president's, he makes six and two-thirds. And the janitor makes three-fifths. All we have to do then is find the sum of these three uh, numbers, fractions, mixed numbers, then multiply that times $17.25. And of course, $17.25 could be converted easily to a decimal, and we know that that would be the same as 17 and one fourth. And we could change uh, both our sum here to an improper fraction, change the 17 and 1 fourth to an improper fraction, and we do some multiplying. Now, there's some big numbers involved with that. However, there are opportunities to find common factors and that will make things much more manageable. So make sure that you find those common factors before you actually do the operations. 
problem looks hard, but if you take this approach, it won't be that bad.